when it was coming forth, it shifted like this. And when it shifted, it wanted to fall. Then Uzzah did what? Uzzah put forth his hand to do what? Is he doing what is right or wrong? If you see the work of God that want to spoil, you allow it to spoil, would you be right? Did Uzzah do what is right? What did God do to repay Uzzah? David didn't do wrong. But David said, is this God I want to serve? Take it to Bedidom's house. Everybody, everybody go to your house. I know, I know carry Ark again. I know they follow this God. God that I'm trying to, I'm evil. Saul did not even seek you. The Bible said they did not seek God in the days of Saul by the Ark. They didn't seek God. Now David wanted to do the right thing. And then this is how God wants to repay him. David was right to say, you know, enough is enough. David was right. He was right. So at the end of the day, what happened? Let me tell you what God was trying to do. You see, if God had allowed David to succeed that day, the, the, you know what they call disorder, disorderliness. God had told him, and it was later, when David heard that God had blessed the house of Abedidom, that he changed his mind, I guess he went to search the scriptures to find out why that thing happened the way it did. So you know what David said? The Bible said, David now came and said to the sons of Zadok and to the sons of, of Abiathar and the sons of uh, Levi. He said, arise and gather yourselves together that we may bring up the ark of God back to its place. For we did not do it the first time according to the due order. Wherefore the Lord broke a bridge upon Uzzah. For you know that no other person ought to carry the ark except the priests. Therefore sanctify yourselves that you may carry the ark on your shoulder. So God had said that the ark will be carried or born by the priests alone. The ark is the sole property of God is the it, it, it abides in the presence of God, and only those who live in the presence of God can carry Emmanuel, can carry the ark, can exhibit him, can show him in time of trouble and in time of danger. And guess what? The first time David gathered, the Bible said he gathered all the mighty men and the great men and the chief of the fathers, those who had feather on their head. APC and PDP, the people, the political big wigs, the celebrities in society. Why? He was doing church dedication and inauguration. He left the people that he was supposed to call. He called the wrong set of people. Now, the, the people are not wrong, go, but for that assignment, they were not the right people for that assignment. Did somebody get what I'm trying to say here? If David had succeeded, that is forever, eh? the office of the priests and the office of the Levites would have been relegated. Nobody would need them anymore. Guess what? Anytime they need to carry the ark, who will carry the ark? The same committee that David formed will be carrying the ark. God said, eh? If I allow this thing to happen, my word will be taken upside down. There will be a misplacement of the order. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there are no powers that be but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever, therefore, resisted the power, resisted the ordinance, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So watch this. All the devil need to kill Uzzah is to resist order. Is to try to just turn ordinance. And how do you, how do you resist ordinance? You resist ordinance when you resist or reject order. Did you get that? You resist ordinance where you reject order. Why? What sets order? What gives power to the prop to the president? What determines what the president can do and what he cannot do? The what? The constitution. Hello, somebody. Can president just enter town and select 40 women and marry them whether they like it or not? It's not the president. He can select any woman he wants, Abby. 
including if we just enter church, take married women, seven. He can do that, Abby. Uh -uh. President cannot marry we like. He can't take anybody that he wants as wife. Why can he not do that? There's no way in the constitution that he has that right to do that kind of thing. So what gives a president power? The constitution is what tells him what powers he has and what power he doesn't have. I don't know if you understand what we are saying here. So every time you resist the president, you know what you resist? Not the president. You resist what gives him power. The constitution that says that a president or a pastor can tell you A or B. Anytime you say you don't want to hear, you know what you don't resisted? It's not the pastor you resisted. You resisted the ordinance. So let every soul be subject. No power that be but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance. Oh God, I'm not sure you got that. So for me, this is the bottom line. When I step out and the ordinance says, fear not, that God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and sound mind. In fact, anytime I attend an interview or I sit before a panel or people question me or they ask and I cannot answer well, I cannot answer in a manner that, you know, uh, it will justify the kingdom. Guess what? I know something is wrong on this end. I was ministering at the, a relationship seminar in Victory House sometime. And when I finished, one of somebody asked me very, very, in fact, when he asked the question, everybody felt this one, this man don't die. They don't put me for one chance. This is, this pastor cannot escape it. In fact, people started quarreling, grumbling, talking in the, in the midst of the, I mean, the church, they were talking and even online, somebody now saluted myself, boy, man of God, God help you. I just thought you, you were finished. I had already said that it was, it's not the divorce, God is against divorce. And that those who divorce, according to the word of God, when God says, whoever divorces and remarries cannot see the face of God. Then I said something, and I said, one of the ways that God measures your growth or your maturity or the ministries are validated is via your ability to manage a family. That the Bible says, if anyone cannot manage his own wife and children, such a person should not be allowed to be a pastor. Hello, somebody? And that because, why? Because if you cannot manage your home, the Bible says, how will you be able to manage the church of God? And guess what this brother asked me? And it was live. Live. And he asked me. So, man of God, are you saying now that Pastor Chris Oyakilome is a failure? Because since he cannot manage his home, and you said the Bible said that, no, and according to you, you said if anybody fail in marriage, in marriage, such a person cannot succeed in ministry. So are you saying that Pastor Chris is a failure? Uh, I like your laughter. And then all the eyes were fixed. You know why I won't shake? There was no question my master never answered. Including when it looked like he can't, there's no bailout. The worst of it all, he went down in order to rise up. So I also stood, I went down. I said, number one, I never said here that anybody who fails in marriage cannot succeed in life. I said, the Bible said, <laughs> hey, hello somebody, uh, mm, wisdom is justified over children. I am not, the, I am quoting what this, the, the living word has said. You, are you understand what I'm saying? So I didn't say so. So if this world want to change what the master said, it's there in Timothy. Apostle Paul said that the Holy Ghost, that for if a man know not how to manage his house, how can he manage the church of God? Anyone ever read that scripture before? Am I the one that said it? She cannot. And then number two, here's the balance. 
I've always learned that the, when G, that Jesus was right when he said, judge nothing before what? Before the time. See, it is today that you see, you don't see the end. And so the Bible says, better is the end of a thing than what? Than the beginning. I'm the patient. Don't be, don't be rushing. Don't rush to conclude about anybody. That a man of God is going through a phase in life does not mean that that is the end of the man of God. Now listen, listen to what I'm saying here. This, and I asked him. I said, the man of God, our father, that you just asked me this question about. Is he remarried? Is he remarried? The answer is no. Is he handsome enough? Does he look like a man that most women want? Does he have what he takes? Why is he not remarried? He has an understanding that something may be failing. It doesn't mean it cannot work tomorrow. Listen to me. Somebody, some, a wife can leave a man and remarry and born children for that man. Later, when the, the fullness of God is ready for that person, you come to your senses again. You can return back and say, I am sorry. So you don't know. We can't conclude yet. And by the way, that's why you see a person may be having issues in marriage. It doesn't mean that he cannot manage his home. What we are saying is that inability to manage issues. We didn't say issues will not come. Issues will come. But what Paul is saying is that so when the person is managing the home, how are you sure? Are you, are you even sure of what he's doing to, to manage that situation before you are judging him? That a marriage broke it's not a sign that a ministry has ended. Well, hello, somebody. Ah, may you not marry a woman that will put to a man that will make your life upside down and ministry. And, ah, go and ask the Ayoba ah, Manola Joseph. What doctors did to him? Doctors docked his life. At a young age, 49, finished the man. So anointed, anointed that the anointing was too much. Every water he touches him. The thing is unshown. The miracles are flowing. When when he got tired of people gathering up jerrycans, they bring, they come with drum, they come with tanker, so he can just bless the water. Anywhere they carry the water to, things are happening. So when he people were coming from Europe, America and all, he couldn't cope anymore. He went to what's it? Oshun River. It's okay, no need. I want to bless the water here. This river, I want to sanctify it. Any sickness, child of God. Oshun River became a, a tourist I'm not playing, a tourist site where people were traveling from all over the world only both white people were coming down to take the water to enter the water because whatever sickness hit the water was cured I'm sure that time Biafra had not been established otherwise Igbo men would have taken the water and started selling the water trust our Igbo brothers that's for laughs anyway all right, now, now, what am I saying? How can such a man so anointed, so anointed that he was praying on the mountain one of those days? He prayed until he didn't know he had prayed and got him. He had left this realm. A python came from nowhere and wrapped itself around him. A python, what they call that? A, 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 a something conspirator. There's a name they call that snake. Boa conscriptor Con wrapped itself and then. So what was left was to break his bone and then you swallow him off. Guess what? Baba did not know that snake came home. He only woke up and noticed that electric had dried up a snake on him. How can a man be so anointed and the, what killed him is a woman? His wife frustrated his life. Sometimes he said when he's going to crusade with white she will wait on the road and pour in palm oil. Oh, it was that bad. Came from the mountain one of those days and as he when he got home, she went and cooked a wonderful meal for him. A goosey and uh, I think I think we said a goosey and the uh, and the pounded yam and put chicken, good chicken inside. The man of God said, ah, finally, God is answering my prayer. My wife has changed. Let me settle and eat. As he was eating, she said, I thought you said you went for three days dry, but my husband. He said, Yes, by the grace of God, I just these three days I went for. He said, ah, and I thought you said you are a man of God. He said, I don't understand. He said, if truly you are a man of God, and you went for three days dry to mountain, you would have known that this chicken you are eating is our neighbor's chicken that I stole to test you whether you will know. 
And the man of God got up and washed his hand. And left the food. Thank God for Rachel. I would wonder how would have survived that. Now, to you, if a marriage like this doesn't work, that man is a failure. No. Don't judge anything before it's time. And when I was done, so simply what did I do there? I just manifested Emmanuel. I get what I'm saying. At that point in time, I don't shout, Mokbeo, yeah. I don't look at him with bad eye. In my mind, God will punish this wicked idiot for asking me if you question. No! Every challenge is an opportunity for you to recall Emmanuel. For you to look back at the word. You know, we only look at the word and say, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. What about your word have I hid in my heart that I may not fear bullets? Welcome to another month of supernatural. Celebrate Jesus somebody. The Bible says, make no provision for the flesh. Why are you helping the flesh to calculate? Why, are you, why don't you just do it and trust God and see whether truly you will die? So most of us didn't join VG yesterday. Because in your mind, pastor must not be this neighbor on Saturday night. And they will be in church on Sunday morning. Ah, eh, no, I will do the VG because if I don't do it, they will say, I didn't obey. And if I do it, any time I come to church, you take it like that. You see, you already made provision for disobedience. Is there anywhere in the Bible the Bible teaches to act like that? And uh, that's not a bad way. So, what is a bad way? Always remembering the word. Always remembering the word, including your business. When it's time for business, and then you now go, ah, no, madam, this is business. No, I'm even quote Bible yet. Leave Bible out of it. <laughs> what you just said is throw Emmanuel out. And those of us that get too busy with work. You know, somebody was telling me, I think Brother Victor, he said I was in, in his office during the week to pray. And so after I finished praying for the place, the landlord was around and said, me, I won't leave there until I bless their soul. So as I was praying for the landlord and his friends who were drinking, the one selling shawarma out there said, today, in fact, he came and dragged me and said, sir, sir, I need prayer here, but what I want is everything inside you. I want you to give it to me. I said, wow. And I poured. And after praying, they sent money for me from landlord, sent money for me from the shawarma man, put money in my pocket, and I started laughing because I needed the money. Amen, somebody. Amen. What's my own? I prayed. I've, um, God has moved. So, I left. Where we were going, he was telling me, he said, no, when we, when we saw later in the night, he said, Daddy, do you know that? It's not they are not understanding because they used to wonder what kind of human being I am. That what it is, when is there Bible study? I don't care the money that is coming. Once it is time for Bible study, I have left. So they used to wonder that, is it alright? No matter what they are drinking, let them declare free drink. I don't join them. So they used to see me that something is wrong with this one. After you now came now, they now is not like eh, eh. they now on that they can see the eh, eh. now we know he has been with Jesus. And what I love what he said is that do you know the devil tells you that that Bible study day is when you used to make the money? Since you are making the money, how much have you brought for the roof? Let me tell you. If you leave your business on Bible for when it comes to God, you know, I used to wonder how about Vice President Professor Yomi Oshibato. When he was in Lagos, I used to, he was a parish pastor. And guess what? I don't know now, but I know until he became vice president, he was still a parish pastor. And I think in Abuja, there's a parish for him. But I'm sure if we have a resident pastor, maybe he may be the either provincial pastor or something in such a parish. I know somebody. Now, when he was in Lagos, he was attorney general of Lagos State. Come on, somebody talk to me. What kind of office is that? Small office. Do you, will that kind of office have time to be lying down, sitting down? They call you two four for cases. Sir, actually, um, this is my friend, the son, the son, they caught him at so so so. We need your help. We need everybody is calling him to tell him something. Guess what? Unless Oshimba is outside Lagos, 
nobody does his Bible study. He teaches his Bible study himself. Attorney general. How do they do? listen to me? If you hold this word, there's nothing. You nothing will be too. Nothing will be impossible. All these excuses is because of you, you have not made up your mind. Jesus said you can't serve God and what and mammon. Let me tell you, and you will never become rich by abandoning God to pursue your cause. Never. Guess where wealth come from? You remember the Lord your God. It is He that does what that give you power. Nobody makes wealth by walking. You can never be wealthy, wealthy by walking. Never. It's either given to you or you struggle to you. Check all your... That's how you used to tell many instrumentalists. I say, check other keyboards that collect 20,000, 5,000, 4,000. If church is doing program, they will now remind the pastor that, sir, it's not part of the contract to these women own. It's not part of the contract. So they have to do something and then, okay, we'll, we'll try. We'll arrange like 2,000. say, ah, sir, it won't work. Oh. Sir, things have gone up with it. Negotiating with God. Amen. Ask the Lord this morning. Now, you know, sometimes we used to pray and say, Oh God, Father, don't leave me. Father, take not your Holy Spirit away from me. It's not scriptural. That's not God. It's not biblical prayer. I will give you another comforter, the Holy Ghost, who will be with you for how long? Come and talk to me for how long? No, he will be with you anytime you lie. He will leave you. No, Holy Ghost never leaves, but you can grieve the Holy Ghost. You can grieve him in such a way that you silence him, but he can never, he can never leave you. So we are not asking God, Father, don't ever leave me. Jesus, don't, he can't leave you. You were not the one that went to meet him before. He's the one that came to look for you. So don't start praying for him now. If he gave, gave his only son then, how much more now? Will he not freely give you all things? So we are not asking God, Lord, don't leave me. No, we are not saying, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, be with me. No. Father, help me to be with you. Help me to always be connected to you. Anyone pray that prayer in the name of Jesus in this month of glory? Mighty God, enable me. Help me, Lord, to ever be connected to you. Help me, Father, to always be, always be, never to be unplugged, never to be unplugged from you and from your spirit in the name of Jesus. All through this month, my thinking, my movement, my my walking, my actions, let everything, Father, be the result of your word, result of a work with your Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, help me never to stray away, help me never to leave you, help me never to depart from you, help me, Lord, with grace, grace to always be there, to be conscious of your presence, help my eyes to open to know that you are always with me. In the name of Jesus.